just went and did a little bit of grocery shopping, and I found that in traveling with hockey, one of the hardest things to do is trying to eat not like a bag of shit. Good fruit, green beans, baby carrot, dates, two whole roasted birds, honey mustard for my birds, hummus, also for my birds, natural peanut butter, scoopable eatable snack, three kombuchas, and some homemade vegan chili. So if you're traveling and you're eating pizza, mucking hot dogs, eating at gas stations, and eating all the junk at the rink and drinking Gatorades 24 seven, you're not doing yourself any favor. Again, I'm not a health food expert, but what I will say, if you fail the plan, you have planned to fail. And also that vegan chili. Matt Labarge's mother, thank you Mrs. Labarge for the fantastic vegan chili. The reason I eat like this when I'm on the road is because I picked this up from Rob from Butt I was thinking this whole video could be like uh, an insight, like, like ways to eat healthy on the road. Great, thank you. Thank you very much. Like if I go to a restaurant, bro, like I eat, like, I eat restaurants, but like, I wanna go somewhere sick. Buttons right now, 25% off. Final chance to get one in the sale. How do I recommend you pick one up? You wanna check one out? I've been talking about them all week for these videos. The link in the description. Check it out. Have a day, son. Let's just put the pucks over on the wall there, on the half wall. This is gonna be the bet with McAllister. He gets four, he wins. Be patient, and once in a while, maybe throw out a fake poke check. That could not have gone any worse. What did we learn? And he pretty much did exactly what I talked about. He comes in off that angle, and to give the guy, hey, hey, how old are you now, Mac? 18. He's got the full ride to Western Michigan. He's got three or four years to develop. When you just set yourself up stationary at the top of the crease on a guy that can shoot or deke, he's got you fully Because if you don't discourage the shot, then you have to respect the shot. If you step out a little bit more aggressively on the initial angle, if you can't make him deke, he's, he's gonna do that. As you can imagine what an NHL guy can do if that's what that guy does like that. Without any movement, you're fucked. Fully fucked. When I say back up, you back up. I'm gonna work on the timing with you. Ready? Go! All right. I feel like I don't have the time to make that up. You, got, you have to be able to back up like a Lamborghini. You can't back up soft. So when you're there, when I say go, it's not a slow back up. It's gotta be one big C push that pulls you. Much better timing. When you get set up deep like that, and he takes a look at you and he sees five shooting options. He knows he can open stick fake you to bite. And then when he pulls it, you saw what happened. He's got you swimming and he's just sliding. You know, on a breakaway, if you give the guy the option to shoot or deke, you're fully fucked. I feel behind. This thing, this is kind of, I click, it's missing. Anytime that a guys have advanced skills like that, you have to be around them, seeing it five, six hours before you can start adjusting up to speed. When you get it cold water like that, it shocks you when you see it. I want you guys to walk out and use the screen, shooting from somewhere out through here. So stay on the short side look as long as possible. When you do switch from short side look to far side look, that head's gotta snap across to find it on the other side. Heart. Say, once he comes across that point, you gotta, so there's actually, believe it or not, not that you give a shit, but puck marks on there from the Toronto Maple Leafs, because this we use this up in the NHL. And I invented this in 1992, people do screen. It's good to see a lot of people have started using these in drills, because it's a, it's a great teaching tool. Your body can move to the middle, and then once it comes to the other side, you gotta, your head has to go. Good shot. Look at that save right there, excellent. So point shot, use the screen.
That's not in your glove. Oh, I thought you had it. Grab a drink, Trav. Good work. Great device for just building, like we talked about, confined space. Now you're artificially pushed back. You can't get out where you want sometime when you got traffic. We already know the book on him. He likes side block. We're going to do the same thing opposite side here, okay? I don't get how does he get the puck back so fast. He's like 130 pounds. It's, it's like golfers. Like some of those guys that are four foot 12 in the PGA Tour can stroke at 350. It's not physical strength. It's, it's that sequential derotation of hips, everything, arms, torso, all firing sequentially, which lets him do it. So it's all technique, it's not strength. Do you imagine him when he puts strength on top of that? Like he, he's literally shooting that thing harder than college guys who are like 240. Right. Yeah. All right, I just want you to come in with some good speed. And whenever you get the puck, you can either go like this with it or the other side. But I don't want any fakes. It made me work though. Plus you got good scorpion footage out of that. Hey, hey, hey. what's your handle? Uh, what is mine? Matt Dotlaverge. <laughs> Yeah. For grinder or for... <laughs> hunter, 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 hunter. It's a lot of hunters. How can I move faster and more smoothly around the crease? Power and strength in your lower body and your core is going to be what causes the explosiveness around the crease. I think there's a lot of off ice stuff you can do and if you speak to Maria Mountain, she's probably the best at developing that from a conditioning point of view. But on the ice, skill development, it's just purely repetition. The more you do something, the better you're gonna get at it. So um, instead of wasting time, if you're a younger goalie with that with an issue, flipping pucks and goofing around in practice, anytime the coach is talking at the marker board, spend time working on your crease movement. So just beat it to death. Every chance you got a free moment, push it. What's something a skater can do to help his goalie warm up for practice or beer league games? Put pucks off their pads, float them from a long distance away, don't be deking, and just ask the goalie what they want. But you certainly shouldn't be trying to score. Do you still poop while standing? I haven't pooped since the last interview, and if this thing could end soon, I'd appreciate it because I've got a, an explosion about to happen. Jesus Christ. Do you want this in YouTube or not? Come on, I'm, I'm trying to get subscribers. This guy's a... Well, we're trying to get to the 10 minute mark. That's all that matters. All right, let the ads play and watch the entire video. Trav's trying to get a mortgage paid here. How do pro goalies break in their equipment, specifically their glove? Well, number one, you got to spend a ton of time with it, but the biggest thing people don't realize is pro equipment gets designed and created in what they call a cut fashion, meaning a lot of the internal equipment pieces are already broken down and cut in certain areas so that brand new they're ready to go that's why they can use that stuff in the outdoor games right brand new out of the box because they're not like off the store brands where they got to be broken in how do you overcome confidence issues sam hildebrand 35 well confidence issues are going to be hard to overcome a lot of goalies talk themselves into being poor and can also alternatively talk yourself into being great so the first step is what you're doing right now is being aware that you have a confidence issue i would say watch tons of highlights of your own games if you can pull those together go to the nhl.com and pull lots of clips together before you play of watching NHL highlight save reels because there's some osmosis that happens there but at the end of the day confidence only applies to the future or the past if you're just thinking about right now you can't be nervous you can't be underconfident you can't be anything because you're just thinking about right now so get your brain in the present how much do stats matter when scouting a goalie Alex Lamont they make a ton of difference because as an NHL scout basically what happens they'll watch all of the different leagues that are scoutable that would be the European leagues, they'll look at some U.S. high school hockey, they'll look at Division One. they'll look at all the major junior leagues. And what they'll do is they'll look at the stats and they'll go through and identify the top five, six guys stat-wise. And they'll also check on the stat sheet to see the height and they sort of match those up. So stat starts do, sorry, stats do matter at the pro level. Best sticks in the market? No idea. Best stick brand? No idea. Favorite gear to use? Vaughn, because Mike Vaughn and I are great friends. I've known him for 30 years. He got me set up with Vaughn equipment when I first played in the NHL, and we collect cars together, and there is only one answer to me, and that's Vaughn. Oh, by the way, and all the kids that I mentor get all brand new gear, Vaughn. And I know another guy 
that's getting a brand new set of Vaughn gear. But I can't talk about that yet. How often should I replace my gear? How much blame should I put on comfort or feel? Well, you have to have gear that you're not even aware that you're wearing it. So if it doesn't feel right, it's going to throw off your game. So, you know, you're worrying about straps and this, that, and the other thing. It's one thing, but make sure your gear is comfortable so you don't even notice you have it on. Having a hard time scoring, where is every goalie weak? Every goalie has various weaknesses, but if you had to distill it down to one spot, if you can uh, take the puck from a closed stick position in front of you, quickly adjust it sideways two or three feet, and go 16 inches to the blocker, you'll be filling nets. Noah and Rocco would like to know if you were ever in the quote-unquote show. Yes, I played in the NHL for the Vancouver Canucks December 5th, 1990. Puck stops here. Sam Mantini would like to know, will you ever work with a men's league goalie, or would you? I work with adult goalies, any goalie that wants to learn. I'll work with anybody, no matter how crazy it is, like Trav. Like, I'll work with Trav. That should tell you I'll work with anybody. You can get a hold of me. Trav knows how to get a hold of me at futurepro.com. Anybody wants to work with me, Joe, I'll do it. Mentor program? And also, the mentor program, which is something that, you know, we can explore later, but it's something where I work with goalies at a high level and it's open to anybody to apply and I started the mentor training 20 years ago and I've put a lot of kids in higher leagues that come and take advantage of the mentor program. You get free gear, you work with me, doesn't matter where you live, I come to see you, you come to see me. It's not for everybody because of the cost but the mentor program has got great results and if you want to work with the GOAT, mentor program. And that will include our q &A. I can't handle Trav's knob. <laughs> this is a you got a sticky shaft. Does it need like a lubricant or something? Feels good actually. <laughs> twist. Yep, get the double get the double twist going. The whole game is the front today. Hey! 